So the big old mess that is my Astro with the 5.7 transplant and I'm going to show you guys my E-fan that I installed to replace the uh, mechanical fan that broke for the second time. So there it is. There's where the old fan was connected. There's uh, enough clearance by having the E-fan shifted over towards the inlet side of the radiator. You can see I still have some exposed radiator, but by the time the coolant gets to this side of it, it's pretty well cooled off. Haven't uh, had any issues with it cooling. Um, I got my radiator lines and my transmission cooler mounted right back there. Can't really see it. This is my next project. I'm sick and tired of having that stupid cone filter, but finding something that actually fits and uh, isn't too tight in there. The stock air box, even with one of the other guys using those silicone elbows cut in there, just just it's too tight for my personal preference. There's really not very much wiggle room in there, plus getting it off to service it and putting it back on it would be a pain. So I'm still trying to figure out a way to do that better, thinking maybe something that will work down in this cavity a better. Of course, my oil filler, I moved that over to try getting it to work because it was down on that hole, I drilled a new hole to shift that over. I made clearance for the air box, but I got to figure something better out. Maybe uh, find a different, I don't know, something different that hoses it, plums it into the actual throttle body. Regardless, you can pull this out of the way. You can see the rest of the E fan. The only thing nice about that, you can move it easily. And there it is. It's an 18-inch fan out of a Lincoln, not a Taurus. It's a two-speed fan. I snagged the harness, so I got the circuit breaker, the 30-amp circuit breaker. Uh, picked up this Imperial adjustable thermostat. And if you can see this wire, I actually routed this wire in under behind that so that it's capturing as much heat as possible because the original thought was to have it running up in here but it just wasn't close enough to the radiator to kick it off uh, effectively. Uh, I've got the power coming in here and I tap that into our fuse box up here onto a ignition only on the inside so if you pop this off there's no actual difference this all looks the same, but let's see if I can get this to focus. Hold on, make it focus. Well, anyway, if you look at this, this row is actually completely on the same power feed, and it's controlled. All these are controlled by the ignition switch. These are always hot. So I tried to work something in where I could tap into the always in and then have a fuse and all that stuff, but I just didn't have the right connectors for in here. I'd have to go scavenge them out of a junkyard, and I really didn't feel like it, so I tapped into the main line going into there, and then I fed that line out of here underneath and then out of here, and I've got it running over to that. I got my main power line coming off the accessory and this runs into a 30 amp fuse here which runs up to my set of solenoids you can see this wire here jumps the power coming in off of this pink line which I tapped into here down there because I couldn't get the spade connectors in here to fit that gauge wire. Uh, so I have pink going in here, pink switches over into this, and then it goes out to my two heavy gauge wires out to the E-fan. This wire currently sits empty because I have to hook that up to the air conditioning circuit or to a switch so that I can run that in either when I'm towing or manually turn it on if I'm having an overheating issue for whatever reason. I can kick that on. Um, the thought is, is to run it actually into the 411 PCM I have installed because that does have control uh, uh, points for the low and the high speed on the fan, but that has to be programmed in. And I'm currently not in a position to 
get that programmed in. So currently it sits just running off of this $17 thermostat and eventually into a switch on the dash, which I still haven't figured out where to put it yet, but I have no need for high speed on the fan. Um, I haven't worn this thing up, so I won't turn it on and make you wait for the fan to kick on, but needless to say, when it does kick on, you can feel the airflow coming from the outside of the van, and if you're standing outside the door on the passenger side when that high fan kicks in, you can feel the heat across your legs. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the performance of it. Um, my problem is, like everything I seem to do on this van, I fix one thing, something else goes awry, and currently I need to figure out why I'm getting lean bank cylinder codes for both sides of the engine. I'm getting a PO71 and 74, and that happened right after I got this all hooked up the first time. So that's my next project, but just wanted to show you guys what I did installing this. Uh, the other thing I did do is I used the original fan shroud, and you can't see it down there at the bottom, but I cut that off, and I'm using that as a, a support for this, and then I have two screws going into the actual uh, holes that are in the radiator fin on the top just to hold that in place. I think they're, they're kind of loose. They really don't hold. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to sink a couple of screws down here into the plastic and and hold that in place so that it doesn't move. But when the fan kicks in, it's not going to fly back into the engine shroud. It's going to pull up against the radiator. So a couple more things to tweak to get that 100% so I don't have to worry about it anymore. But uh, needless to say, for $17 for the controller and $13.50 for the fan, um, probably spent about 20 bucks for these high amp, uh, I don't know, you can read, it's not looking like it's going to pick it up, but anyway, I got 60 amp relays to uh, handle the power, um, but, uh, you know, pretty much for about 50 bucks, I got an E-fan, and it kicks some butt, so if anybody's uh, planning on eliminating that big old shroud and the fan, even on your uh, regular 4.3 trucks or vans, highly recommend it, cheap, easy fix and uh, gives you a little more room to work on the belts and uh, whatnot. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you later.